we're gonna do a couple of rolled pasta shapes. So when we're rolling dough out, and I, I don't use a machine for this. I've always done it by hand. Um, you definitely want to have some flour on your work surface. <clears throat> we're gonna cut a piece of dough to work with and keep, again, keeping our dough covered so that it doesn't dry out, because it does dry out fast. All right, um, I'm just gonna form it into a disc in my hands like this. And I also want to make sure that my rolling pin is floured. So I put some flour in my hand and I rub it on my board. And, and don't be afraid to put too much flour. It's gonna, it's gonna um, come off in the water when you um, uh, cook your pasta. So I'm just gonna roll. I go back and forth a couple times one way, and then I turn the dough over and swap direction, so at 90 degrees, and then a few times that way. And that's okay if it rolls up. Now my grandmother used to do this thing. She would, let me take my ring off because it's gonna hurt the dough. Um, lots of flour. The old Nona's do it. They roll it on the pin and drag it toward. And, and that gets it to spread out nicely. So then we have to go the other way. So we'll get it on there. Oops, make sure we put flour in there. Okay. Now you don't have to do it that way. You can just do it like this, the way you would with a pie crust. Um, you just want to get it thin. Now this is a small piece of dough that we worked with and that's okay. So now if I want to make fettuccine, probably want to make it a little longer. I want to make fettuccine or linguine. The way my grandmother would do this without a machine, put a lot of flour and then you roll the dough toward you part way. Uh, that's too much. And then we roll the dough away so that they meet up here in the middle. And now I need my board because I can't cut on this surface. And what you do is you cut, try not to make it move all over the place. You cut with your chef's knife whatever width you want your fettuccine, linguine, whatever it is to be. So you cut them. My grandmother would fly through this, depending on the knife I'm using. Okay, so let's just do that. And then to unroll them, you slide your knife underneath the, the cutting edge is, is here. I'm gonna turn the cutting edge down and you go like this and ta-da, look at that. They unroll and then you can, if you turn the knife back this way, you can get your hand and you can make a little nest of fettuccine. That's a little short one. And we can cut the rest That was a skinny one. There we go. And again, slide the knife under and the sharp edge turns down and you lift them up and give them a shake and then you can grab and make a nest of fettuccine. Oh, you can't see it behind my garbage bowl. There we go. So that is how you do fettuccine. 
Now, now if you roll it bigger, obviously your fettuccine are longer. The last shape that I want to show you is bow ties. So this is, everybody knows, farfalle, right? Farfalle. Farfalle in Italian means butterfly. Okay, means butterfly. And bow ties look like butterflies. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can, oh, and again, we got a flower because we're gonna roll the dough out. If you wanna be fancy, you can have one of those shaped cutters. Um, you don't need to. If you have all straight edges on your fafale, they really look like bow ties. Um, if you have the fluted edges, um, then they look like the butterflies. So we're gonna, again, roll this out just back and forth. That's all we need, back and forth, and then turn it 90 degrees and turn it over. And because I'm gonna do farfalle with this and we need to cut these into rectangles, I wanna try to have my dough kind of be in a rectangle instead of round. Now, if you're just making one shape of pasta, obviously it goes a lot faster because you're not changing, changing up what you're doing. I'm trying not to hurt my fettuccine over there. Slide it around. And I'm gonna give it one turn around. really helps it. Okay. And nothing has to be perfect. So don't feel like it has to be. All right. So um, in Italy, they have a, a cutter. It's called the bicicletta. It's a, like a bicycle. And it has like four wheels and you can set them at what it, look at me, I have flour all over. <laughs> you can set them and you can cut. So we don't have that. So I'm gonna use this butter knife since it won't hurt my work surface. And I'm just gonna square it off on both ends. Now these scraps, if you cut these up into little pieces, they're great in soup. Um, I'm just gonna square this off for our fafale. My grandmother would take these little pieces and um, cut them up for my brother when we would when she would make ravioli, and because um, he didn't like cheese. It's crazy. All right. I don't know if we can get two rows. We might be well if we do small ones. We can get. So we're gonna cut these. I'm gonna cut it into three long rectangles, and then. Okay, and I just kind of eyeballed it. And so what do I have? 15 rectangles, so I'm gonna have 15 farfalle. So what we do is we want to take and pinch right in the middle and squeeze it. And then if you turn your hand over, you can pinch the other the outside edge is up, and you have a bow tie. This one's pretty easy. Um, and you can just scrunch that middle down, but if you, you can pinch in the middle, it's hard with my nails if I do it on the table. So pinch in the middle, squeeze it tight, and push the outside edges up. There and you have another bow tie. So these are really big bow ties. So we'll just finish to make these, pinching in the middle and then squeezing it all together. Here we 
go. Now, in um, the Pasta Pretty Please book, she makes a dough out of, um, she uses activated charcoal, or you can use squid ink, and you can make black bow ties, and it's like black, a black tie event. <laughs> so keep on pinching them and making your bow ties. And there you go. That's how it goes. So what do you think? Can you make your own pasta now? It's okay if you end up a mess like me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed uh, the tutorial.